All right, and we are live. Welcome to the Blood Stream. I'm going to do my little spiel here, and then I'll bring on tonight's guest. So if you guys uh, are interested in joining the stream to ask Mr. Lori a question, to make a comment, to just say hello, uh, I'm going to make that link available later on in the stream. That link is already available to my patrons and channel members. So I'm going to give them first crack. And Mr. Lori, and then I'll make the link available to everybody else. If you just want to ask a question <clears throat> in the chat, uh, please do so. I'll try and keep an eye on the chat and keep up with everything. The best way to do that is to send your questions through a super chat. That way they're easily accessible. YouTube keeps track of them and I can pull them with absolutely no problems. As a matter of fact, we have a super chat already from my buddy Nico. A day of celebration, my favorite 1940s series, Whistler Films, announced on Blu-ray and Piz returns with a brand new bloodstream. Well, thank you very much, Nico. I appreciate that, sir. And I actually have a special, a special little pop-up here for all super chats that we receive tonight. Here we go. Trick or treat, motherfucker. So everybody, there you go. We've got Buster Rhymes in the house too tonight. So, <laughs> but uh, thank you all for, for, for hanging out with us tonight. I appreciate it. I see a lot of familiar names in the chat. Horror Orman. We've got Future Dead Camper. We got Swaggy. We got Spooks McCreepy. We got Andy Shoemake. Um, Return of the Disc. Thank you all for, for being here tonight. So without further ado, my guest tonight is an actor, a stuntman, and he was Michael Myers in Halloween Resurrection. Mr. Brad LeRae, how you doing, sir? Justin, my buddy. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm well. Good, good. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to hang out with us and, and talk about movies. Yes, well, thanks for having me on your show. I'm really, really honored, and I'm glad to be here. Hello to everybody out there in uh, horror fan land. Lots, lots, lots of people out there in horror fan land. Um, so, yeah. um, so I'll just, I'll just, I'll just get right into the the heart of the matter here. I mean, I think most people watching this or listening to this are, of course, going to know you from playing Michael Myers in Halloween Resurrection, but. Um, one look at your IMDb resume reveals that you have had quite a career as yeah. both an actor and um, a stuntman. So was, yeah. was was show business something that you always wanted to get into, or is it something you yeah. kind of fell into? Fell stuntman? Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh, uh, Justin, uh, since I was a little boy, I, I fell in love with the escape that a, a, a an hour and a half, two hour movie uh, 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 offered, and. Um, but when I was uh, 13, I fell in love with Bruce Lee. I joined the local karate school. And the instructor there was a guy named Tony Morelli, who over the next 10 years went on to become a world champion uh, full contact kickboxer. And I became his sparring partner. Um, and then he got recruited by the stud guys here in Vancouver in the early 80s when the film industry was first starting to come here. And he just kind of dragged me along. I So my answer to your question, Justin, I wanted to be a stuntman, or I wanted to be an actor. But um, stunt, stunting is the uh, de is the uh, department where I had my connections and nepotism. Okay. So I to do both. I've been very, very fortunate. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, you're the first stuntman that I've ever had on the channel. So oh. I it, it, it's, it, it, it's kind of a, it's a, it's an interesting uh, part of, of, of show business. Can you give us an idea of what it's, what, what's the average day like on set uh, as a stuntman? What, what goes into it? How do you prepare? Uh, how do you make sure th that you're going to be protected? What kind of precautions do you take, et cetera, et cetera? Sure. Well, once you uh, establish yourself as a, 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 a performer and the coordinators know you, like we don't work with agents, they just hire you on your own resume. But once you get hired, when they, when they first contact you, uh, the, one of the first things you're going to ask is, what are we doing? Like, what is the gag? And then you prepare from there, you know, and I mean, Justin, um, just so people understand that it, it the stunt the word stunts 
in the film industry refers to any kind of physical action. So you might be falling out of a chair and you might be falling off the side of the building. Now, one pays more than the other, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, um, as you get older, like I am today, I get hired a lot. To... <laughs> when I do get hired, it's usually just to be a passenger. In the... I just spent three days on some show a few months back as a passenger on a bus. <laughs> and, um, but you know, it's like if you could, if you're gonna do a fight scene, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be getting shot and haven't hit the ground, you bring your, you know, you bring your, uh, you bring your basics every time. You bring your elbows, knees, and back pad, and um, you know, you start to. If you're gonna do a fight scene, you want to limber up. Um, for other, for other things, you just, you just, uh, you just prepare accordingly, like like a good, like a good boy scout. Um, you know, if you're doing a firebird, you got to bring all your Nomex and all that, this, that, the other stuff. And uh, you, you bring, you bring all that yourself. They don't supply that to you on the set. Well, Justin, um, bigger, more organized coordinators will have a lot of that stuff. In, in, in but if they're hiring, uh, if depending on who they're hiring, if they know you're a vet, they know you have your own stuff. But they don't take a chance of you not having your own stuff so quite often. But yeah, the idea is uh, you always have you you should have as much of your own stuff for any gag as you can possibly have, just because it makes it easier on the coordinators. And there's no such thing as having too much safety equipment when it comes to safety. Okay? Oh sure, of course. You know? yeah. So you just prepare accordingly, like I said. And the in the fight sequences, I'm sure that 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 a lot of choreography goes on behind that. Oh. So yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to do at least a full day of rehearsal and uh, things always change on the day, of course. But uh, anyway, then I, uh, sorry, I didn't really finish your, answering your question. So you go to work, you start with a nice healthy breakfast because they've always got all this food out for you all day long, food, food, food. Um, <laughs> and then you go to hair and makeup and wardrobe and you get into your costume, your, 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 your outfit, your, co your costume and you, you get your hair and makeup done. If you're a stunt double, you get to made it, you get to be made up like the actor, of course. And then depending on how quickly they need you on set, you either hang out with the gang. In the old days, we always had our own rooms and you just go and have a nap. Uh, but today, um, they've tightened up the, the call sheets. You used to, <laughs> in the old days, Justin, if you were in the last scene of the day, they'd bring you in with everybody else first thing. And you said, I've gone to set and sat around for 12 hours before I went to set. Wow. And, you know, and then you get kind of lulled into this, you're half asleep. But um, anyway, then you go and uh, they call action. You play Cowboys and Indians. You fall down on the X. They call cut. They send you home. And we'll see you next time. So you, you, you sit around the set all day falling asleep and then the next thing you know okay let's light him on fire yeah yeah and i've been on set many times back in the day where it's three in the morning and you're not half asleep you're asleep and suddenly and they'll tell you we're not going to get to your gag because they always leave the stunts to the end of the day because they need the dialogue to glue the story together uh a full-on barroom fight scene can be pared down to two punches and a kick of the nuts if they need to you know but they need the dialogue so Oh, we're not going to get to you. We're not going to get to you. And then it's three, four in the morning, pouring cold rain, and they go, "Okay, we're going to go." And then you got to rush and get it done. So I've done that many times. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, speaking of the gags, um, is there one that sticks out as like the most dangerous stunt that you ever did? Yeah, there's just in the one stunt that I did. Back in uh, mid '90s, I'm gonna say uh, on a TV show called Mantis, uh, it was a short-lived series called uh, Mantis. He was a African American scientist who was a paraplegic by day and this superhero at night. And um, I had to double this particular episode's um, bad guy. He was like a um, an android. He was a big, tall actor. He, he was. Um, and the character was bald. He was silver, and um, but the gag was running because um, he's being pursued. He runs and jumps through this window, this eight foot by eight foot window. That's all happens to be on the third floor of the building, and so we rehearsed it on the in the daytime with the with you know it's just my ramp was there led right up to the windowsill. Then you had to jump, but the trick was you had to jump out into the blue sky before. And you had to clear the window before you could see the airbag and the 
real difficult part was the the level below jutted out from the from the building that had like a concrete deck down there um with these big concrete railings and steps and whatnot and um so it was more of a long jump than it was a high jump three flo- three stories isn't really a big deal going into an airbag as long as you you know do it right but that long jump was the tricky part and um it was a little unnerving having to run and just dive out into the sky and then trust that you're going to make the distance but on the day <laughs> because they had uh they had fitted the costume for ken kurzinger my good friend who had some bad had bad knees from uh his college football days he he bowed out of the gag so they fit me in all this gear, uh, but then the very last minute, and, and when we got into the room on the day to shoot it, Justin, now it's nighttime, and the glare off that window was like blinding, and they've got all these uh, lighting flags in the way of my ramp. So for the first half of the runway, I had to kind of run along the edge, like on the very edge. And then they put, and then they come with this cape and a gun rack to put on my back, and the and the position to raise this dogs was. <laughs> They bring me Ken. What was was meant for Ken was these big, brand new knee high, concrete stiff motorcycle boots that were two sizes too small. Mm. So my toes are curled up in there. I've got no room to run, and like my takeoff has been reduced by about fifty percent. So you know, oh. and the thing too about even though they had knockers on all four corners with two guys on the buttons where they where they smashed the glass for you just before you hit it to make it look like you hit it broke it um even though it's broken a big pane of glass like that if you break it too late it will hold the person up from going through years ago we had a guy just going through a basic a regular window the the guy on the button hit it just a second just a half second too late the guy hit the window, it broke, and then he fell into the sill and sliced his knee all the rat shit. So Ooh. um anyway uh they finally, uh, the director, we'd been there for 13 hours and he was getting antsy and he had five cameras on the gang. And he's like, okay, we got to get go. We got to shoot them. Blah, blah, blah. So um, they, then, that's, then they bring the boots up and I'm just like, I can't do this in these boots. And the coordinator said, well, <laughs> good luck. So they called action. And I said to the two guys with the knockers, I said, <laughs> see you downstairs. And I just ran and j- jumped. And uh, the director was, the director was beyond happy. Um uh, in the scene, if you're watching the show, Justin, you see this guy run and jump through the window. So you see the guy come through the window from one angle, and then he backs up and shows him come through the window from another angle. He showed four different angles. Like he showed the guy come through the window four times and then continued with the scene. Like he almost broke with the flow of reality is what I'm saying. Uh. But, um uh, the coordinator was happy. The director said it was the most exciting study he'd ever had the privilege to, to uh to direct guy from, uh, I think he was from Missouri, Kim, uh, Kim Matters, who's gone now. And um, just a great guy. So that was my big claim to fame as far as it, that's the one really dangerous. That I've done other things, but that was the one where I was like, if I could get out of this, I would. Well, uh, has there been a stunt that you you were like, that's too much, I'm, I'm not doing it? Um, I was called by a friend of mine who has, <laughs> as, a, as a gift, wanted to give me a really big high fall but justin i wasn't really an air guy you know i i was never a gymnast or a trampoline guy i didn't mm-hmm. have a great sense uh, air sense you know and think about high falls i don't care what you're going into other than boxes if you don't land a uh, horizontally you can go through an airbag and you can go through pads and you you know and, and i had a tendency to be top heavy where i would always end up upside down and uh I did some, I did some like one story high falls where, uh, I, you know, I, if I had gone to the doctor, they might've told me my neck was fractured because I, you know, anyway, uh, and my friend called me and said, Brad, do you want to do this? I think it was like 60 or 70, 80 feet high fall. And I said, no, mm. plus there's no money on the show. No. I'm not doing big gags for half a. <laughs> no, 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 no. Life, we've got 20 bucks in the kitty for you. Yeah, that ain't happening. But yeah, that's not- the one gag that I remember saying no to. Mm. Um, our buddy, my buddy, Hor Orman, uh, with the two dollar super chat says it was a pleasure to meet Mr. Lori last year. Oh, we're at yeah. Where did where'd you meet Mr. Lori at last year, Mr. Orman? Oh, by the way, let's hold on. Where's here we go? 
For you, for you, Horde Orman. Trick or treat, motherfucker. There you go. That was for you, my friend. Um. Well, you know, I, I imagine being being it is doing stunts in as many films as you have, you've had to you know sustain some injuries over the years. What was the worst injury you sustained as a stuntman? Um. The worst, uh, the one injury where I actually had to take two and a half months off, I broke my shoulder, my mm. right shoulder, jumping off of a um, train tunnel. I was going about 35, 40 feet into Porta Pits, doubling Robert Urich on some TV movie where he was, his character was jumping onto a train. Sorry, I just had to steady my camera. Um and it, that was all due justice to some bad advice from the stunt coordinator. Um, uh, take one went fine. Take two, you know, and then he told me to readjust the way I was landing in the bag. And I knew darn well, but I was green. I couldn't contradict this guy. This was a guy who has a lot of ego and wasn't big on losing face by being contradicted by his underlings. So I did it his way, broke my shoulder, and then I had to do it two more times. Oh, with the broken so shoulder, you did yeah. two more. Oh, wow! I fractured the top of my humerus, and then I had to do it two more times. I, I have fractured my other shoulder, at least tore it up really bad. But I, I was, I was too green to take time off because, of course, if you take time off, you, you don't want to come across looking like you're soft. Right, right, right. You don't want to be an overly macho moron, but you don't want to come across as soft either. And also, it's a reflection on the coordinator if you get hurt. You see, so. um so I did it his way, broke my shoulder, did it two more times, <laughs> and then I had to, um, and then I had to go on disability for two and a half months. Oh, jeez! Yeah, wow. I broke my back doing a high fall off a helicopter. Again, landing upside down in the box rig that was really hard. Wow! I fractured my L four, but I just, I just, sorry, I, oops, sorry, I just kept working. You're so you're you sound like a pretty tough guy then. Well, not really. Um, <laughs> I was more broke than I was tough, Justin. <laughs> if I stopped working, they weren't going to pay me, you see. But mm. actually, they compensated us very well back then in the old days. Um, but, uh, you, saw, you, you know, you, you're like a professional athlete in that. Sometimes you got to play hurt. And um, my friend Tony Morelli, the karate guy that got me in the business, he said, if you ain't working, if you ain't hurting, you ain't working. Oh, okay. His old saying, you know. So if mm. you're not on the lift, you haven't been working lately, you know. Mm. Well, uh, Horror Orman says he met you in Cincinnati at Horror Hound and that you autographed his Resurrection Blu-ray. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. I was in Cincinnati. When was that? In March? Anyway, I've done a few shows over the years and I, you know, they all kind of run in together. But anyway, yeah. You've got, you got somebody else here who uh, met you at Horror Hound last year. Uh, said you were really nice and uh, he's got a finger tattoo of you. A finger tattoo of me. I yeah. wonder where that went. Um, <laughs> a finger tattoo. I don't recall a finger tattoo, but I'm. I have autographed people's bodies and had them go and get the tattoo of my <laughs> autograph on their body. I did that a couple times. I, I thought, man, you're a little too into this horror. <laughs> <laughs> there, I mean, there. You know, hey, we're we're we'll we'll get to talking about the Halloween fandom here shortly. There, it, it's hardcore. It's hardcore. Well. Um, one last thing I do want to, well, two, two more things I want to ask you about stunts. Um, of course I can't ask you about every single movie that you did stunts on, or we'd be here for several days, but there are a few that I would like to throw out there. And if you have any specific memories or stories be from making these movies, please let me know. Uh, the first one is time cop with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Time cop old JCVD. Um, Yes, I got uh, recruited on that show when the original stunt coordinator got injured rehearsing for another show and got replaced because he I, I wasn't in the uh, local stunt group at that, at that time, Justin, and he was, and, you know, their mandate is to use their members first. And so he was trying to keep me off that show because I had this reputation. You know, I got into the business being a fighter. Uh, but he got hurt, so was, uh, so Melissa, my friend Melissa Stubbs got uh, came on the show and she called me up and she said, Brad, they've, 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 they've amalgamated two characters 
and you got a big fight scene with Van Dam, but Brad, you got to do a good job because they haven't been, uh, they haven't been very um, uh, happy with the lo local some of the local stunt guys. So I went in there and uh, <laughs> the very first take, they did a cowboy switch, what we call a cowboy switch, it's inside the kitchen of a house, and you see Van Dam walk by the kitchen window, and then uh, he he comes and he walks by the window. But on the other side, he his stunt devil's waiting to take over. And it is dimly lit, it's nighttime, and he sneaks into this kitchen where I spring on him and I hit him over the head with this <laughs> this big glass jar, sugar glass jar full of whatever was in it. Then I grab him and I throw him across the kitchen. I grab him again and spin him and wing him the other way. And uh, when, <laughs> when they called cut the stunt the stunt double I uh, forget his last name Mark he'd been a Navy SEAL and was a real he was a real guy but he looked over his shoulder and went that guy could have been a contender and the, <laughs> the director um um uh Himes Peter Himes who, who is it Peter Himes Peter Himes he comes out from the from the camera looks around and goes well no need to shoot that again so that was a good start because when I asked the American coordinator if he was happy, he says, well, Brad, we shoot everything three or four times. And you nailed it first take. So, But then uh, we fought down the hall. He kicks me over a couch, and I ended up getting shot in the head. Mm. But it was a real – it was a, that was a real feather in my cap because um, the guy they hired that had the reputation of being this all-star martial artist that played the, the – the, 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 he was like the main event as far as the fight scenes go. The guy was absolutely awful. Hmm. And they took this big giant fight scene and they pared it down to a couple, like I said, poke of the eye, kicking the shins, and uh, you know that was it. But um, that was a good, that was a good, a, a, a good, uh, a good day for me. Hmm. How about the sixth day with Arnold? I, uh, well, I'll tell you about the sixth day. We shot for three weeks on top of the uh, Vancouver, uh, the old Vancouver post office. I fell in love on that on that show uh, with a young girl that was working on the show, and we spent three weeks smoking cigars all through the night. And uh, all I remember doing was taking a few steps, shooting at Arnold, and then I get shot and I fall down. But for some reason, Justin, and this is the only time this has ever happened that I know of, uh, my 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 um, fall didn't make the cut. Mm. I got edited out for some reason. Um, and there's going to be a million reasons for that other than me sucking. But um, I, I I did that movie for three weeks and then went and paid cash for my Harley. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Thank you, Arnold. Uh, yeah, thanks. How about Get Carter with Sly Stallone? Get Carter, uh, the stunt coordinator, Sly stunt double, uh, who was the coordinator, had me come and meet Sly and whatnot to play this guy in a car that is... Um, watching Stallone and Stallone catches him and pulls him out and smashes his head through the window. But I guess uh, Stallone said to the guy, I was too tall. Mm. But then they needed a guy that Stallone chases out of a house. He runs through a, some French doors and jumps off a balcony. And you, you never see the two of them side by side, so you can't see how tall I am. So that's what I ended up doing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Uh, Final Destination 2. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that was many years ago over on the island. I um, I was just driving a car in the background of that when I didn't do a whole lot of exciting okay. stuff or anything. But, yeah, there was just a big uh, driving sequence on the highway. So mm, That's a very famous driving sequence on the highway. I'm, 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 I'm assuming you're talking about the one that opens the movie. It's, uh, it's famous behind the scenes, too, because we had a lot of headaches trying to get those gags right, flipping the cars over the log and... And cannon rolling the cars and uh, oh, just all sorts of nonsense went on. But it sure was fun. It it, it looked great. It, it definitely freaked out a lot of people. That's if you mention, I think any of the Final Destination movies to people, they're going to go, oh, part two, that opening was oh, 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 oh. You know, I see a log truck on the road and I'm getting the hell out. Of it. Even today, I see a log truck in front of me. I'm like getting getting away. Actually, Justin, it was just I think it was Final Destination two where they had a. Uh, car flip go wrong that and there was a young kid on the show that came so close to getting squashed mm. uh and, and fortunately nothing happened but you know 
It just takes one little, little, little uh, incalculation, if that's even a word, and things can go very wrong very fast. Oh, yeah. How about, here's an interesting one. Freeway 2, Confessions of a Trick Baby. Okay, now you stumped me, brother, because uh, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Justin, some of the titles I worked with were just the working title. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that that's that's possibly it. It what it didn't start it it didn't start out as as confessions of a trick baby. How uh, that? and what was it about and who was in it? Uh oh, gosh, what was uh what was her name? Uh, it came out in 99. What was the lady's name that's in it? Natasha Leone was in it. Oh. Um, Justin, I don't have a clue. Which okay. No problem. Not, not a problem. Not a problem. What about, what, okay, this is my last one. Another interesting one. Freddie got fingered. Oh, I knew you were going to ask about Freddie got fingered. Yeah, I, um, I doubled, um, I doubled um, Harlan Williams. And I also slid a car through an intersection. I slid a car through an intersection. I don't know if that was as. I, oh, I, I guess that was Dublin Harlan. But I also had to wear a cast on my uh, leg and get kicked in the shin to the point where the cast fell apart by Rip Torn, I believe it was. I remember that. I remember that scene. I remember that. Yeah, and uh, that was uh, that was quite the show too. And um, but I got to meet Harlan and Rip Torn and uh, and uh, Green, of course, Tom Green. How was how was Rip Torn? Rip just introduced himself real quick, which you know what is um I really appreciate it because you know he was a pretty big name mm -hmm. and not everybody does that because I you know I doubled John Kusak a couple times and never even got to meet the guy because he was kind of a little standoffish, you know. But they're they're in their they're act you gotta remember actors are in their heads. Mm -hmm. They're always in their heads. You never mm -hmm. know when they're relaxed and when they're not. Yeah. And they might be looking like they're just sitting there staring off into space, but they're actually thinking about it. So you got to, you know, anyway, Rip, Rip was, uh, I, I'm really honored to say I met Rip Torn and shook his hand. I was, I was speaking off the record to a, a longtime stuntman not long ago, and he'd actually worked on, uh, he did stunts on a, a Charles Bronson movie. And I love Charles Bronson. And I was like, oh gosh, what was Bronson like? And he went, I don't know. Never met him. And I was like, like, oh, okay. The founder of our stunt group, Stunts Canada, Alex Green, doubled Charles Bronson on a number of things. And I worked with uh, Charles Bronson on a movie that we called Seawolf. Mm. I didn't get to work with him directly, but Alex told these stories about <laughs> going up and from behind Charles Bronson because he was a bit of a gruff character, you know, and trying to slide in beside him on his seat. And, <laughs> and Bronson didn't, he's, didn't even look up from his paper. He goes, that. Fucking better be you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Bronson. That yeah. sounds like Bronson. Yeah. A little birdie told me uh -huh. that that prior to Halloween Resurrection, you were not a horror fan. And in fact, you disliked the genre. Tell me this isn't true. Sorry, Justin, but I, uh, I, as a kid, you know, I never saw the, I've never seen the original Dracula or Frankenstein or, um, you know, any of these a, a werewolf movies. Uh, when I was 19, 20, I was dating a girl who was really, really, really uh, attractive. And so whenever she wanted to watch, we went and she loved horror films. So for two years, that's all I saw. And I just hated them because... <laughs> It, being afraid, I'm already paranoid. I don't need to be more add fear to my to my buzz, my daily buzz. Okay, but when I broke up with her, I was terribly heartbroken and uh, I was very hurt. But I said to myself, "Well, the one positive you can take, Brad, is at least you never have to watch another horror film." And then the next week, everybody was talking about this movie, Halloween. And when my cousin Diana said that uh, she really enjoyed it, I thought, "Well, I respect her enough, and I'll I'll check it out." And I ran to the film and I'm halfway into it. And I said to myself, this movie is damn near a masterpiece of any genre uh, because it wasn't bloody gory, overly bloody gory or violent. It was just so gosh darn suspenseful because the guy was so creepy. And um, I wasn't going to, I only went for the interview. I was called up out of the blue between, between seasons on this other show I was doing, Justin. 
And I had no intention of taking the job. Actually, I thought they were looking for a stunt double for Michael Myers, the guy from Toronto, Frost and Powers, right? Because <laughs> it's been 17, 18 years since I've seen the movie. I forgot the guy's name. But when I went in there and uh, met with the executives and did the walk for the director, and the director said to the producer, he should be fine. And the producer said, well, Brad, we're, you know, we have to look at other people, but if we do decide to go with you, we're going to send you down to L.A. to cast your head for the mask. Uh, and whatnot. And I said, what do I mean? I got to go all the way to LA just to double some on the actor. And they said, no, no, you're not going to double the guy. You're going to be the guy. And that's when I went, oh, this is a completely different ball game, boys and girls. So I passed going on going back to my old show and, and took the Halloween gig, which was the smartest move I've ever made in my life. <laughs> so what I, in you auditioned. So I assume there were, there was more than, than one person up for the role. No. Uh, Oh no! It's no, just you. No, they interviewed this AD that I had worked with, and in the, in his interview, he met, they mentioned to him that they didn't know who they were going to use for their Canadian stunt coordinator, nor did they know who they were going to use for Michael Myers. And he said, "Well, you know, you should talk to him. you. Should talk to Brad Lurie. He just started coordinating. He's a great stunt guy. He's a really guy, a good guy to work with." So I get this call out of the blue from this woman I've never met, uh, the production manager. She said, Brad, how tall are you? First thing she said, how tall are you? I said, I'm six, two and a half. Oh, perfect. Can you come in tomorrow to meet the executives? And I said, yeah, I can. Even though, like I said, I was had no intention of taking the job. But then um, when they said, you're going to be the guy. And um, so they just all, and they, and they never looked at another person. Well, hey, I mean, they, you were perfect. And they just, I was the first guy they interviewed and they went with me. You were perfect for the role. Yeah. And excellent taste and talent. <laughs> there you go. I, I agree. I agree. Well, how did you, did you do any, I mean, you were talking about, you know, actors being in their head and you've done a lot of acting yourself. Did you do any preparation to play Michael Myers? Did you go back and watch oh. any of the other movies or? But I watched all the Halloweens from start to finish. I fast forwarded the parts that didn't have Michael Myers, but inevitably I came back to the first two, especially Nick Castle. There's the one scene at near the end of the movie the first Halloween where he's walking towards uh, the house where Jamie and the kids are. It's the longest scene I can remember where it's um, Nick Castle. It was a gate mm -hmm. the way he walked, you know? And so I just watched, I just watched it over and over and over. And um, I even practiced, you know, and uh, Rick Rosenthal, my director was very good about reminding me to just take my time because I was very nervous mm -hmm. Um, I actually, uh, one of the reasons I never made it as an actor is I get really anxious when people point cameras at me. People want to do selfies in, in iPhones. Uh, I, I get anxious, but Justin, I'm, I'm 64 this year. And when I was a little boy in my Sunday best before church on, on the front lawn with your arms bone straight beside you, you know, with the old box camera, you had to look down and it films a million dollars a roll, according to my dad. <laughs> if you made a face or looked away or you blinked or had a cow lick, you got smacked in the head. So it was always getting your picture was always a very uh, unnerving uh, uh, um, experience around my family. <laughs> well, I, I can imagine. I mean, Rick Rosenthal directed Halloween 2. Yeah. I, I'm surprised he didn't say, watch Halloween 2, do what that guy yeah, did. didn't do any of that. He just... Um, all he did a couple times was remind me to take my time, you know, um, really, uh, it, he gave me the best advice. He said, Brad, it's as if you're, up, it's like, it is as if your upper body has been set on top of your hips and legs and, and it's the legs that are transporting the upper body around. You don't swing your arms. It's hmm. just a re that's how he described the, what he wanted to see. And so that's what I tried to, 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 to copy. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I get that. I guess yeah. That, yeah. Did you do the classic, you know, bad guy on the set where you secluded yourself from the rest of the cast to, you know, create mystery or to, to make them scared of you? Or did you just say, screw it? And you just hung out with everybody and kicked it with everybody? Um, I just, I, 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 when I, when they didn't need me, I hung out in my trailer, but not for the purpose of, uh, I just, um, wanted to be as hands off if they need me, I'll be there. Um, 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 Bianca Kelchek, and I apologize if I'm saying your name wrong, Bianca, but she uh, was scared to death of Michael Myers. And when she first met me in broad daylight, dressed like a normal person, she screamed and ran away. <laughs> and like, was really just afraid of me because I was going to be Michael Myers. And then she started to come up with the habit of 
I'm holding my hand and walking around to get used to being in my in my presence. And uh, so I didn't have to work on scaring her, I'll tell you. She was nervous from the get-go, but she sure was great to work with. Oh, I bet. Yeah, that's, they that's... all work. Oh, I guess yeah. all those from the kids on down to up to Busta and his acting coach Tracy. I can't remember her last name, but uh just terrific. I, it was just one of the one of the best six weeks of my life. Mm. And now that I get to do interviews and conventions and uh meet with other filmmakers, it's just been it's just been you know a real treat. Yeah. Real awesome. Well, you know, I've got to ask you about one person in particular that you got to work with, an absolute legend. And um, I mean, of course, I have to ask you what it was like to work with Busta Rhymes. Well, Busta and I didn't have a lot of personal interaction, except just that every morning in the makeup trailer, he gave me the most authentic bear hug. <laughs> and uh, I didn't get it. I didn't get to rap with him a lot, but I'll tell you, I sure enjoyed. I sure enjoyed rehearsing the scene where he's following Michael Myers, or Michael Myers. He's yeah, he's following Michael Myers, and then turns on him and starts flipping on him. And um, oh, I laughed so hard in the rehearsals I couldn't even finish the scene. And then on the day when we went to shoot, I was a little more used to it. But um, I had no problems with Bus. I guess he was a little tardy to set. He had his entourage with him, mm. you know, and. Um, Mm. I really liked Busta. I when we were done, I immediately went out and uh, um, bought three of his uh, albums. You know, but I don't mind hip hop and rap, but that he, he's a little more advanced. You know, I it's, that's an acquired taste. But I'll tell you, nine <laughs> eleven happened. That's probably one of the most scared I've ever been in my life because I knew Busta and Tracy all lived downtown. Like I, I'd never had friends in downtown New York before. Mm. And I'll tell you. I was really nervous until I heard they were okay. Hmm. Well, I'm I'm sure he kept this the the mood on the set very uh, fun and you know what I mean. Oh I yeah, imagine. yeah. I I, I uh, the, the 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 producers and directors will tell you a different story from what I hear, but I didn't see anything that was untoward. Oh really? So they yeah. the, they were just saying he wasn't a professional. Came and went. I guess what he wanted to. I never oh, saw. Okay. You know, he had lots of scenes without me, so, um, but I, 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 I love the guy. What was, uh, Mustafa Akkad is of course the, the, the godfather of the Halloween franchise. He was sort of the stalwart through, uh, through all of the movies, all the way up through resurrection. Uh, he of course is unfortunately no longer with us. What was Mr. I, I, I know you, you certainly Mr. Akkad probably had to approve you to play Michael as well, right? What was what was Mr. Cod like? Well, I'll tell you my one um, Mustafa Cod story. He was there, and we uh, when we I, I don't know if in the previous film they had shot Michael Myers' mask with a, like a black film inside the in the mask, and they shot it. We shot a couple of three scenes with this um, mesh in the eyes, but he put the kibosh on that. He said, "No, I want to see there's a human being behind. Oh, sorry, behind the mask, you know." And so he, he did away with the mesh. And I appreciate that because one of the things I get uh, um, complimented on is whenever we had a close up of Michael Myers or a, even a medium shot, I would cross my eyes somewhat, Justin, just to try and take the focus out of them. Mm -hmm. So they would look, I was trying to make them look like a shark's eyes. That's mm. how I equate Michael Myers. Sharks swim and kill. He walks and kills. So that's what I wanted to look like. I wanted to look like those soulless dead eyes of a shark. And I I was really, you know, being Canadian, we're very hands off. So I didn't want to, you know, hang out with him and rap. But I had to, I, I did go up to him and I had to tell him, I said, you know, Mr. Kata, I'm not a huge horror fan, but I am absolutely a huge fan of the first couple of, or the first Halloween movie. And he put his hand on my face very gently. And he said, it would have been just that much better if you'd have been in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was so sweet. So sweet. And I'm, I'm friends with his son, Malik, to this day. Mm. And, well, uh, well, oh, you mentioned your eyes in the film, and there's a there's a scene in the movie that's always stuck out to me where I, I believe it's right after you have pinned the one guy up against the door with the multiple knives Sean, yes. and, and you and there's a close-up on your face and you turn around and your eyes are just like that's that's what really 
draws my eyes particularly it's kind of that look in your eyes it's it, like you say it's that thousand yard stare it's just you know so that's that's something that really sticks out to me still today about uh, resurrection and and, and, I, and I, I like the way the mask looks in resurrection too it's got a very kind of sinister look about it yeah it's kind of got furrowed eyebrows and i'll tell you it was super comfortable and um i'll also tell you I'm really sorry I didn't steal one of the masks to bring it home because there's one of them got auctioned off last year in London for 50,000 sterling pounds, 50,000 sterling pounds. I was about to ask you, did you, did you steal it? Did you get one? <laughs> oh man. No, Malik's got, my, my, there was, there was three that I remember wearing. Uh, my agent said that there was five that were used in the movie. Uh, but I only remember three, but um no, I never got one, and mm. I, I tease Malik about that because Dick Warlock, he took the mask, the coveralls, the boots, and the T-shirt home, and ended up set, selling them off as a collection. So, well, I, he didn't ask anybody, from what I understand. He just took them. He just said, "I'm taking these." And yeah, no, he just took them home. Yeah, nobody yeah. gave a hoot. Yeah, he. Yeah, nobody's gonna stop him. Nobody's gonna stop I him. I mean, Nick Castle they only had one mask, and he used to roll it up and put it in his back pocket, walk around with this folded up mask. <laughs> sitting on it can you imagine mm -hmm. yeah oh goodness you know you do have you do have it of all the the performers who played michael myers over the years who donned the mask and the coveralls you have the sole distinction of being the only michael myers to have killed laurie strode that's correct and being kissed by laurie strode and yes that's and you got kissed yes Yes. I can talk about the kiss for quite some time. No, uh, yes, I am. I'm. I was the first guy to, uh, the only guy to ever kill Slory Strode, and uh, uh, yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm very. Um, and you know, the movie wasn't super well received when it first came out. There was a lot of people that were upset with the fact that Michael Guy Myers got kicked through a window by Buster Rhymes, because you know Michael Myers is supposed to be so much stronger than the average human, but. Um, it's got his own audience now. All these young kids that went to see Halloween for the first time in the theater or, or their first Halloween movie was Resurrection. Well, they're all growing up in adults now. And they're coming and saying, you're my favorite because you were my first Michael Myers and this and that. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. Well, what was, uh, what was, I, I, I'm, I set up the question about Buster Rhymes making, I, I'm sure people were thinking, oh, he's going to say Jamie Lee Curtis. No, I, I threw him a curveball with Buster Rhymes. Right. But, what was what was uh, what was it like working with Miss Curtis? <laughs> well, Jamie was uh, just Jamie Lee Curtis. She was an absolute sweetheart. Uh, Malik told me that they uh, she originally only had Justin. I don't know how this comes down, but uh, that she owed thirty seconds with no dialogue. That's what she owed in her contract. Mm. And she said, "Whatever you can shoot in a long weekend, I'll do it." She came up for three and a half days, bought everybody a crew gift was a total professional and nice. she was speak to me and my girlfriend she let us hang out in her trailer and she'd kind of act like a big sister to my girlfriend and tell her how to deal with me as a boyfriend and, <laughs> and all that and you know she was super sweet it was I, I was really excited about meeting her because uh everybody talks about true lies but i was my my lustful days for Jamie Lee Curtis was back when she did the movie Perfect with John Travolta. Oh, I, I knew I, I knew you were going there. Yes, she yeah. she was she was pretty perfect in that movie. As a matter yes, of fact, yes, she was awfully perfect. Yes, no doubt about that. Yeah, my goodness. And and so uh, so tell us about the tell us about the kiss. How many times did y'all have to do it? Was there uh, how, how how was that how was that done? I kept getting that wrong. I kept sticking my tongue through the little slit and. Uh, <laughs> We had to read. No, I'm kidding. It was just we were both hanging there on the side of the set, and um, you know they had the cameras close on us, and you have know, seen the scene. I don't think we shot it more than once or twice, mate. I don't. And they rehearsed it a couple times. Hmm. She was, yeah, she was really. Uh, and then she did her own um, descender, like she did a. Like she was in the harness and on the rig and fell into the pads. And I'll tell you what, for a guy like I said, who's not. Um, an air guy going backwards blind like that is very unnerving. So I really give her credit. She's a tough, tough, tough girl. And yet when she was hitting me with the lap at the beginning of the movie, she was so concerned she was going to hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> I held my armor on, you know, and I just said, I told the coordinator, tell Jamie, 
you can hit me twice as hard as that, and I still won't feel it. So, well, she you you said that she gave your 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 girlfriend some advice on how to deal with you. Do you remember what any of that advice was? No, no. Um, but I'll tell you that I I as Donna Keegan, Jamie Stutt double told me that. When I asked her about the kissing scene, for some reason, she said, well, Jamie won't shoot that the way it's written. It's too hokey or whatever she said. And uh, so I never mentioned it to my girlfriend. So on the day we're shooting that scene, my girlfriend needed to borrow my truck. So she came to work with me. I'm unloading all my gear. Jamie comes running up. Are you ready to shoot our scene today? I think we should do it like this. And she grabbed me, dipped me, and laid a big kiss on me. And boy, <laughs> did I have to answer for that at the end of the day. <laughs> kiss by Jamie and me. Sorry, honey. Well, I mean, look, you, uh, you know, it's Jamie Lee Curtis. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What, what are you going to do? do? It's yeah. in the contract. Got to kiss her. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, you also got to kill a supermodel in Resurrection with Tyra Banks. They, they cut that scene out, though. Well, we shot a scene where I come up behind her and strangle her with the cables. But they end, in the end, they decided to use it as a reveal, which I thought worked very well. Um because the strangling scene wasn't anything we haven't already seen. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like the way they did it. Um, but Tyra was, you know, sweetheart too. Was she, was she, was she cool? Or was she, was she like, don't, 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 don't choke me too hard. I've got, you know, don't, don't bruise me. I've got. Oh no, no, she wasn't a diva at all. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't choking her really, real hard. You know, you make it look hard, but um, no, she was a, she was a, she was a doll too. I, I have, yeah. I have nothing but great memories of everybody on that cast. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, you, you mentioned the, the movie's reception originally. Um, Resurrection has something of a reputation for being a, a troubled production. There were reshoots, multiple endings were um, tested. Of course, uh, the executive producers on the film were, were, were infamous for meddling. Um, what was the what was the atmosphere on the set like? Was it all just cool? Was there any tension? Do you recall? Um, I don't recall a whole lot of tension, but I don't. Um, as a stunt guy, I just go there, follow the acts, and go home. I do my job. I don't get involved in the politics and the the naysaying. And uh, so I didn't see. Uh, I mean, I know there was. Um, you know, we shot the we shot two endings in Vancouver. Did not test well. And the only part of that movie that's not Brad Lee is the very end when they when she opens up the bag and his eyes pop open. They shot that in New York. And I thought that was just such a cliche ending, but that's what the fans want. You gotta give the you gotta give the punters what they want, as they say. <laughs> well, I, I know one of the endings was um like a an investigator looks down a manhole and you come up and grab her. What was the other one that you shot? Um, Justin, you know what? Oh, oh, sorry. There wasn't enough. That, that was the ending we shot. But there was originally in the original script, the scene where Buster comes into the Bernie garage to save uh, Bianca. That was originally we shot the scene with the kid that was on the um, on the camera uh, on the text messaging with her from the from the party. Mm -hmm. He was originally the one that came and saved her, saved her. But then I guess they got talking and realized that didn't make a whole lot of sense. He's just a kid. He's way the heck away. And Bust is not dead, so we might, you know. So we had to reshoot that part of the thing. Then we shot our ending. I thought it was a really good ending. The hand comes up at her face and stops. It pauses. It stopped there, and then there's this big scream. But it didn't test well. The I I agree with you about the the, the theatrical ending of him on the the corner's table and his eyes open. I mean, that's yeah, that's we all knew what was gonna happen as soon as we saw him being wheeled down the hallway. At least, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. What can we do, Justin? I don't know. I don't know. Have you kept up with the Halloween series since Resurrection? I watched um, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween, and I got to say, I did not like it. And I tried. Oh, I did. I did. I did because I was asked to go to a theater somewhere in the tri-state area out in Pennsylvania to meet with some fans and then watch the night uh, 2018 one with Jamie. And I wasn't crazy about that one either. And I fast forwarded through Halloween kills. I haven't seen Halloween ends. I probably never will. 
Um, I, I, I feel, I, I really felt the storylines now so convoluted. You don't know where we're at. Mm -hmm. And Zombies Phil, I felt, gave us way too much backstory because the whole appeal of Michael Myers was the mystique around why he was the way he was. And, you know, there was a real, um, it was very, you know, you know, his super strength and all that. It was all very cryptic. He kind of, it left it up to the audience's imagination as to why he was the way he was. Well, once we watch zo a zombies film, now all, all um, secrets are revealed. Yeah. And, um, that, did, and, you know, plus he's 700 feet tall. It didn't, it, it, it didn't work for me. And I heard a lot of people say that the second one was even worse. So I'll never. I'm I I'm not a fan of the of Rob Zombie's Halloween either, uh, and, and for for many of the same reasons that you mentioned. Um, I do have a soft spot for his part too because it's just so crazy and out there and bonkers. Um, but the the last three movies, the David Gordon Green trilogy, are are very very divisive when it comes to the Halloween fandom. Um, I. I've ne I've never spoken to somebody who says that they love all three. It's like they love one, they hate the next one, and they kind of like the last one, or, or 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 somewhere in between. There, there's no. It's not. A, it's not. It's it's very divisive when it comes to that last, those last three films, for sure. Uh, that's what I get too. I I I have met one person that said they liked the last one, Halloween Ends. I actually, I liked Halloween ends. I liked it better than kills. Um, but it's, it's definitely, if you go into that one expecting, uh, Halloween kills or it, it they tried, they, they tried to cross like John Carpenter's Christine with a Halloween movie. And I, you know, I, there's, there's things I really like about Halloween ends, but that whole, that whole trilogy to me is just, it's such a, it's really just kind of messy and it, it's it's it, it feels backwards to me too so i don't know it's just um it's an it's an odd one it's an odd that trilogy um i do want to mention that uh if you are a patron or a channel member and you want to jump on and ask mr mr larray a question or say hi or whatever that link is available on my patreon and in the community section for channel members go ahead and hop uh pop on get in the green room and I'll bring you guys on shortly. I'll make the link available to everybody else here uh, very soon. Um, this July will mark the 22nd anniversary of Halloween resurrection. It's war of the worlds meets reality. Television meets the internet meets Michael Myers. Uh, some people love it. Some people hate it. What do you think uh, the film's legacy is? You're talking to me. <laughs> yes sir justin uh it's uh, I, I it's legacy is um well the legacy is it's the final chapter of the original story mm -hmm. but also i i i really thought the the uh the, the, the uh, texting and the camera work and all the it was almost ahead of its time in that you know because people weren't all texting each other back then that was something that was kind of just coming on coming to the fore i thought it was um you know, it was a, a little, it was a, a little, it was advanced for its time. Um, I thought that uh, um, there were some good, great performances. It was, um, uh, I, I think over time it will stand up to all the Halloween's except for the first two. That's what I believe. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I just think that it's, you know, it, it was, it was a nice bookend for the, for the original story. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and, and I agree with you. I think it was a little bit ahead of its time. Um, you know, reality television was huge then, you know, I mean, everybody's terminally online these days. So I think it was a little ahead of its time. I think there's some interesting stuff there in it. Definitely. The execution on some of it's a little bit off and it, it, it's, yeah. it's, it definitely feels dated, I think, because of that. Um, but there's some, it was, de uh, it was definitely ahead of its time, I think for sure. Well, I, I, I always enjoyed Katie Sackoff's, um, reference to, uh, Survivor, when she said to the kid about how you're going to get voted off the island, just little things like that. Yeah. Um, I also think it's, uh, you know, it's the only Halloween movie that had the uh, repeat director. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that, you know, oh no, we can't say that with Rob Zombie. Sorry. 
Well, it, uh, but I, th I think you also nailed something too. It's sort of the end of, it was the end of the brother sister chapter right. of Halloween. Yeah. And I think ev even it, there were a lot of movies in that brother sister angle. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're definitely it, when, when they rebooted with Rob Zombie's Halloween, it was a, a hard reboot of just everything, even though Rob Zombie's no longer involved. They brought Lori back, but now she's not the sister. She's just, you know, a survivor. Um, but yeah, resurrection really was the bookend of that yeah. brother sister angle. I think so. Yeah. You've traveled all over the country. You've met countless fans over the years. You're forever part of the dysfunctional family that is Halloween fandom. How does it feel being part of the Halloween legacy? Uh, it's it's just a truly an honor, Justin. I mean, uh, genre aside, um, um, I'm just I'm very proud to uh, have you know like my friend Ken Kersinger who played Jason in Jason versus Freddy. He says, you know, Brad, we're the modern day uh, uh, Dracula and and Frankenstein monsters. You know, we're the new guy. You know, and. Um, I, I'm just so honored to be part of the Halloween franchise because of all the horror movies. Like I said, it's the one that I really, really enjoy, and I still watch it every October. Mm -hmm. And um, and um, I don't watch uh, Resurrection as often, but people sometimes say they want to watch it with me, you know. And, and you know, it's been years since I watched it. It just brings back all these memories of how much fun I had. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Do you, do you have any uh, words of encouragement for anybody out there who maybe wants to get into the stunt game? Justin, the stunt, the, the whole film industry is evolving, uh, ex, you know, along with technology. Um, and I would tell you that in another five to ten years, we might not see uh, stunt people on the on the uh, on the credits because there's CGI and more and more stuff. You see more and more CGI fire. You see more CGI. Of, of, um, of firearms you see i saw a stair fall the other day that was so obviously cgi but it really bothered me how good it looked even though you mm -hmm. could tell it was cgi and that they would use it in a real movie um my advice to people uh that want to get into stunts is that's you know i have friends that knew when they were seven and eight years old they wanted to be a stunt person i don't personally get it I was the guy that wanted to ride the horse to the mark, get off and kiss the girl. These people all want to get shot off the horse at 30 miles an hour because they're insane. Mm -hmm. um, so I would stick with acting if I were, uh, you know, but even actors are going to be replaced by computers. And um, so stunting is, it's in your blood. You know, go outside the film industry, try and find live shows, get into a rodeo. I don't know, Justin, I... I don't want to ever discourage any young person from following their dream, of course, but I just want to know that the dream is attainable and they're at the end of their, at the end of their, um, you know, training towards it. You know, I want there to be right. something for them if they're going to put that time and effort in. Right. Right. Well, we do have somebody backstage in the green room. Let me bring them on to, uh, let me bring them on here. We've got tact dad. Are you there, sir? You are muted. We can't hear you if you're trying to communicate. Hello? Okay, he is muted. All right, we'll come back to Tack Dad, see if he's still there. If anybody else wants to jump on, if you're a patron or a channel member, that link is... Uh, that link is available now, and I'm going to drop the invite link here in the chat to anybody else who wants to hop on to ask Mr. Larry a question, a comment, or uh, just say hello. So there you go. There's the link. Um, I know you've got some convention appearances scheduled. Uh, one, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to meeting you next month in Nashville, as a matter of fact. So. Right. Yes, we're both going to be in Nashville. That's going to be fun. Um Ben and my good friends Ben and Stacy Dixon are putting the show on, and I'm really looking forward to going to Nashville again. I love Tennessee. I have a friend uh, who wrestled for uh, all through uh, his 
young early years you know and he's told me he'd wrestled in over 200 places in the states and i said i said where were your favorite places mike he said well my favorite city was boston for its progressive liberalism but he said i really uh, my favorite people are the people from tennessee <laughs> and after that i met ben and stacy and i was just talking to them i started laughing they go, what are you laughing at i said well my friend told me you tennesseans are the best people in the states is his favorite and I, I i said i now i get why you meet them and within minutes they're talking to you like they've known you for 20 years give you the shirt off their back it's just fabulous people but i find that way about most of my american friends because like i said to you justin i'm not a horror i'm not a horror fan but i am a huge fan of horror fans mm -hmm. that one yet that i that i wouldn't uh you know i wouldn't take a bullet for really and um and uh, you know and of course they treat me a certain way because i'm michael myers but they're just they just, I don't, I don't get it. They all want to see blood, guts, and gore, but they, they're just the nicest people you ever want to meet. <laughs> but I love horror fans. Well, horror fans, we are the most loyal yes. uh, fans of any fandom out there. So, and, and as long as you're good to us, we will forever be good to you. So it's like, it doesn't matter if, if you've, if I've met you at a convention two years ago i'll meet you again at this one or, and you know so it's just that's just the kind of that's just the kind of people horror fans are there's a real camaraderie there's a real fellowship there i really appreciate it i um i agree they're the most i, I say that to people all the time they're the most loyal genre of, of film fans i've ever ever met them and porn fans <laughs> <laughs> Eddie. are there any other conventions uh your schedule that you want to let everybody know about well, um, uh, in the States, no, I don't have anything booked other than Nashville. Um, we have been trying to get back to Europe, Ken and I, for the past two years, but um, um, they, they've gotten canceled the past two years. There was a rail strike in the UK last year, and the uh, venue in Amsterdam uh, it was not uh, healthy enough or something was wrong with it. So, uh, But other than that, in the States, no, that's it. Uh, um, um, I'm really hoping to get back to Orlando one day because I have a I have a, a brother down that I, uh, a half brother that I did only found out about in my 30s that I've only met once, but he lives in the villages down in Florida. So when I go to Orlando, I can get a visit in with him. So oh, cool! But I look forward to seeing the places, Mike, Justin, that I haven't seen yet. I really want to see Boston. I really want to see Detroit. I want to see Miami. I really want to see Kansas City. Um, you mentioned you mentioned Kentucky. You've never been to Kentucky. I've never been to Kentucky, and I've never been to uh, I've never been to Alaska. My dream is to hit all fifty states for at least one convention before I before my days are numbered. But I, <laughs> that's going to be a tough sell. But you know, yeah. I never thought I was going to get to Minnesota, and I was in Minnesota uh, March last year. Oh no, September last year. Okay. Okay. And Minnesota was a big deal to me because I've got history on both sides of my family with Minnesota. So that's cool. Yeah. Well, let's see here. Um, Tack Dad, he's having some technical issues. He can't join us, but he wants to know: uh, Do you ever dress up for trick or treaters? Uh, no, I live in an apartment complex, and I've never been a costume guy. I, I'm really lazy when it comes to, and I don't, and and you know, I don't. I don't do big crowds and, and, uh, you know, I, a trick or treat is, uh, I did it this year up in, um, up in the interior of BC with some friends of mine that across the street from them, kitty corner on their, on their, in, their inner section where they lived, there was this really, um, big, uh, haunted house. These guys spend two months every year preparing this place. And I'll tell you, it was absolutely fabulous. Scared the crap out of me, but I got to go and take pictures with the staff and uh, and handed out, you know, treats with my friends to the kids. That's always a joy, you know. Were you in Were you in Myers costume? No, no, no. We oh, were okay. On the, uh, the uh, furnace they had going there and drinking beer and uh, handing out chocolate. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we've got a question here from my buddy, Matt Rambo Raff for life. He says, hi there, Mr. Larry. Um, he's addicted to Busta Rhymes saying trick or treat mother ever. And, um, he wants to know what was your first reaction when you heard that phrase? Well, I thought it was apropos coming from Busta Rhymes. <laughs> Just the kind of thing he'd say, you know, and I thought it was, um, 
uh, you know, it, it was it's gonna be like like it's becoming iconic that 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 phrase from all the all the different movies, all the different Halloween movies. Did he did he did he just come up? Did he just improvise that? Was that in the script? No, I'm pretty sure it was in the script. You, uh, again, I don't, you know, you know, Justin, when I, <laughs> I kicked myself because I had probably three different scripts because they got rewritten, rewritten, the original yeah. scripts. And why I didn't go around and get everybody to autograph them, mm -hmm. can you imagine what they'd be worth today? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I did, but I just, I, 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 I didn't realize what I was in for. I thought I was just doing another job, you know. Um, somebody said to me do you are you getting any fanfare from this i said yeah uh, some people are requesting autographs and keep those cards and letters coming because i promised to answer them all not having a clue what i was saying of course and um and i just uh and, and in the newspaper article it said something about mr louise in for a great deal of fame now that he's donning the mask and i thought how much fame can you get for wearing a mask I don't <laughs> bloody movie you know and um I called my mom up to say I got a leading role in a movie, but you don't see my face and I never speak. And then she hung up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we do have somebody backstage, and I believe you you may know this gentleman. Let me see. Michael, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. What's Can up, you... man? Uh, how are you guys doing? Good. This, this, very good, Michael. Very good. Okay, maybe this is a little bit better. <clears throat> okay, we can hear you good. Yeah, this so is Michael everything... Strider, Brad. Yeah. Bye. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> is that Chinese? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I'm driving down the road. So, yeah, I'm driving down the road. So, the reception is probably not, not really great. Um, yeah, I just wanted to call in and say hi. I'm glad I haven't talked to you in a while, Brad. Are you coming to Nashville? Um, what's the date? Do you know the date? Uh, well, it's the last weekend of March. I think, are, Justin, are you going to that one or no? Because I think you were talking yeah. to Dick Warlock. About yeah, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to that one too, yeah. He's going. Sean's going. Is Dick going to be there? I don't uh, know. If anyway, is Dick going to be there? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Um, Dick is going to be may, at the other. Uh, there's another one in Tennessee that Dick is going to be at in June. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Brad, I was trying to think of a story from the past, and I have uh, have not had a lot of time to put to put effort into it. But we've we've got a ton of stories over the last, I guess, over the last twenty years. You got to hear um, talking about Busta. <clears throat> yeah, you got to hear. I, I really like uh, Jeremy's imitation of, of Busta. I hated it when Busta said it, but I love it when Jeremy says it. <laughs> Jeremy's my brother, by the way, Brad. He's oh, a big he's a big horror fan, big Halloween <laughs> fan. So. <laughs> and he's he's recited that line a couple times on the channel. <laughs> Trick or treat, MF. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so. it is. Truly awesome. I hated it when Busta said it, but I, I love it when Jeremy says it. <laughs> oh so, goodness! Um, but I don't well, know. For... I don't know if I'm going to make it to Nashville. Okay, babe. We'll catch up to you sooner or later. Say hi to Joe. I'll tell. I'll tell Big Joe you said hi. Thanks, man. All right. See you later. Thanks. Thanks for jumping Thanks, on, Michael. Take care, buddy. Thanks, Have Justin. a good one. You too. Uh, anything, any other projects you've got in the works you want to, you want to mention? No, Justin, I gained over, I gained almost a hundred pounds during the pandemic and I'm having a hell of a time shedding it, you know, and I'm so out of shape right now. It's really a disgrace, but, um, I, I, I had the good, I had the good sense to be, uh, well, I, I had the good sense. I, when I was coming up, you know, I wasn't welcomed with open arms by everybody. So when I, got to be an established guy and met these young guys that wanted to get into the stunt world. I always took the time to encourage them and give them advice. And, uh, I even gave out my number to a couple of the guys if you ever want to talk. And, um, you know, and now these guys are in the business and they're the young guys that are the coordinators today. And, um, they just spoil me, <laughs> spoil me rotten. You know, I actually, I remember one show there a year and a half ago, I think it was the, I think it was the flash. Okay, Brad.
uh, we got you on these two dates. And I said, guys, I, I, you know, I'd rather cut off a toe than, than turn down work. I said, but I'm not going to come to sex and embarrass the group, embarrass the community, and embarrass myself. I'm way too out of shape. I'm way too fat. You make me run three steps, I'll have a jammer. And they said, well, your name's on the call sheet. You can either show up or not. So, <laughs> <laughs> And then you go there and you puke up a lung and they tell you to take a seat. We don't need you in this, in this shot, you know, and it's... So in answer to your question, I, I before the pandemic, Justin, I was working uh, two or three days a week. And for an old vet that's, you know, uh, gotten a little rusty over the years, uh, uh, you know, that's all I need. It's, you know, it's plenty of work. And I'm hoping to get back to that, but I have to get back into shape. So I'm going to the gym tomorrow, folks. Oh, and cool. Hold me to it because I've been procrastinating for about, well, three years now to lose this weight. Well, well, I've been hitting my own little home gym here lately and I've, I've dropped quite a few pounds over the past several months and it, it just, it, it takes effort. It just takes effort. It's effort. And just, you're a kid, so do it while you can, because you get to my age, it does not come off, man. I mean, it's, it's all the work, you know, you have to work your guts out just to, just to maintain, you know, and, um, you could, like you say, uh, fast or whatever you want to do, but uh, anyway. Uh, at my, cause my health really, uh, you know, my, my, my numbers are all off and, uh, my, mm -hmm. my blood pressure and my, this, that, and the other thing. So I got to get, to, I got to get together. Well, I, I know a guy I'm going to, I'm going to give you their contact information. He is, uh, he knows his stuff and he can, he can help you out a lot with that. So I'm, I'm going to give you that, that gentleman's information Okay, brother. after the show is the show is over. Um, well, it, I'm, I'm talking about my buddy, Eric Freeman, everybody in the chat knows my buddy, Eric Freeman, but I'll, I'll, I'll pass along his contact info to you. He, 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 he will definitely help you out. Thanks, man. Yeah. But, um, that's it. Unless anybody wants to jump on here at the last minute, or if anybody has any final questions that they want to ask, um, go ahead and get those out there. But, uh, Brad, I just want to thank you so much for your time. This has been great. I appreciate all the all the stories, all the insights. Um, it's been just an absolute blast. Justin, my, my pleasure, my honor. Uh, can't wait to see you in uh, Nashville. We'll get a, we'll get a picture together. I'll sign a, a eight by 10 for you. And um, maybe we'll even spill, spill some beer together. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me on your show. I'm available to you anytime, sir. I appreciate that very much. And I will definitely take you up on that beer. I'll let you buy. I'll even let you buy. I'm good for it. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm going to bring a mask. Attaboy. So I'm hardcore. I'm hardcore. Oh, yeah. I can see that. I can see <laughs> the background there. <laughs> uh, let me do some shout outs here before we call it an evening. Shout out to Horror Orman for the $2 super chat. Thank you very much. Shout out to my buddy Nico for the $10 super chat. Very kind of you, sir. And shout out to Andy Shoemake for upgrading their channel membership. I appreciate that a lot. Shout out to Future Dead Camper and Michael Myers fan forever who tuned in over on Twitch. Let's see who's still with us here. On YouTube, we got 80s Betamax. We got Swaggy, who's also going to be uh, most likely in Nashville. So that's cool. We got Johnny all the way from Ireland here. We got George. We got Claw and Go. Uh, we got Steven here. Uh, who else have we got? We got my buddy Dave. We got Rambo Raff in the chat. Uh, Joe Reese. Dakota Smith. Scratch Burno. Thank you all for joining us tonight. It's been a pleasure. Again, thank you so much, Brad. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. We have got one more person in the green room. They just joined. Whoa. Hold on. We're all it's, Ra it's Rambo Raff. What's up, man? Hey, Matt. nice to meet you, Mr. Lori. You too. My name's Matt. And uh, I just had two quick questions. I know you guys head out. Uh, is it true you worked on uh, Mission to Mars with Brian De Palma? Because uh, remember, Alyssa, you're like a stunt performer I, on that uh, show? I, I had double Jerry O'Connell on a TV show called Sliders they did here in Vancouver. And I, okay. On the day that I went to work on Mission to Mars, they had me in this big giant wheel that was going around. And I was I was cabled into this exercise equipment. It was, it was a camera test. Okay. They had this big camera on a crane and... Um, I was just in my t-shirt and shorts where you could plainly see that I was quite a bit bigger than Jerry. 
But the thing is, the whole movie was in space suits. That's the, you're never going to see that was, you know, but Brian De Palma saw me and said, that guy's too fat to double Jerry. And he, he, he asked me to be fired. And they were going to have me back. Uh, uh, but I, but the call didn't come. They called me and said, we were going to call you here. Hopefully before midnight, I was way out in Alberta. Anyway, it answer to your question. I did that one camera test and that was it. Hey, I'm sorry to bring that up. I didn't know you got fired. Yeah, because I was. To... I wanted to meet Tim. Uh, Tim, what's his name? And I wanted. I really wanted to meet Don Robbins. Cheadle. Tim yeah. Robbins. Tim Robbins. I want, but I really wanted to meet uh, Don Cheadle. But I didn't. So, but I got fired by Brian De Palma. How many guys can say that? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and Matt, yeah, uh, I guess, uh, the... oh, sorry. Go ahead. You had a second question. Oh, yeah. Uh, I also saw on the credits, uh, you know, I guess you were part of a film that I did enjoy called Dick Carter, the remake with Stallone. Yeah, yeah. I was. The what guy, stunts did you do on that? He went back to the girl's house, and there was an intruder in the house. You didn't see the two guys side by side, like I said, but he, uh, he chased the guy out uh, upstairs. The guy ran through these French doors and jumped over the balcony and got away. That was me. I was supposed to be the guy who he, he slams the guy's head through the car door window, uh, but uh, Stallone felt I was too tall. Uh, and so he, he kiboshed me for that scene. But the scene where you don't see us together, so you you know you couldn't see the contrast, that, that's the scene I did. Too tall, that's a bit weird, but yeah. okay. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard Stallone is a little sensitive about his height. Yeah, he wears, he wears lifts, and uh, I bet he, I think he wears three inch lifts, and um, yeah. But he's a uh, my buddy, my buddy that uh, doubled Mickey Rourke. Uh, he he just said Stallone could couldn't have been nicer to him. You hear all these stories about Stallone, but I've heard lots of really good things about Stallone. You know what? It's almost like a human being. Sometimes we're on, and sometimes we're off. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, absolutely very true. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. I don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, thanks, Pizzo, for allowing me to do that. And thank you for your hard work. Uh, uh, you mentioned about the, the sound work sadly disappearing, and it's a shame because I grew with all those movies, whether it be the, the Canon films, there was a company called PM Entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, all those movies where people put their hard work on the line, uh, explosions throwing their body through glass through fake glass sometimes real glass all sorts of stuff and uh yeah thank you for your work and contribution uh it's it's, it's a shame that cj is taking over and because it you guys i mean you can't get more real than real and you guys put your bodies on the line and you're the hero can't do anything if the stuntman isn't performing the fall yeah no, but we can, as an audience, rebel against that, you know. Um, I remember when uh, they did the remake of Get Carter, or, no, of The Italian Job with Mark Wahlberg. One mm -hmm. of the things they advertised the movie was all real stunts. I remember that was a big part of the selling feature of the show. All the stunts, all the car chases and all this stuff was all real. That was part of their thing. And, um, like, I, for one, uh, you know, we all we could all tell CGI. I, I can't watch these big action Legion movies because I mean, I, I love Jason Momoa. I had a great time working with him when he was up here, but I can't, I have never watched Aquaman because I, the CGI, it looks like animation to me. Yeah, it, 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 it looks, it looks like you're watching a video game. Watching a video game or a cartoon to me, a cartoon to you younger video. Exactly. And I've heard young people say they hate, they hate the CGI. So I, I, I for one will be boycotting any, anything that's too woke politically correct to the point where it's in my mind it's unrealistic i won't support it by watching it i turn them off and uh same with the cgi i mean i mean cgi allows us to do movies like um what was the big one with james cameron and the blue people and all that avatar i mean or, you know for me cgi you, you couldn't have made fear and loathing in las vegas as good as it was without cgi Terry Gilliam's film with Johnny Depp and, and Benicio Del Toro. But when you take it to the point that it's all CGI and they're going to CGI, all these actors, these big name actors are, are copyrighting their image so that they, they, they can't be CGI. They have to still pay them. 
um, is the stories we're hearing. Um, so I just say as a community, as, you know, a movie is 24 frames a second of some real live action. It's not something a computer generated. I wouldn't even call it a movie. I'm going to come up with a different name for our next show, and I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> well, Matt, thank you for hopping on and asking uh, asking those questions, man. It's 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 great to see. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well as well. Thank you, Mr. Lawyer, for answering those questions. And uh, you guys have a good day and a good weekend. Be safe out there. God too, bless. Man. Thanks very much. Take care. <clears throat> thank you. All right, folks. We're going to wrap it up there. Brad, again, thank you so much for your time. If, if you don't care to hang on just for a few minutes after we, we finish this, um, I'd like to speak with you just for a couple of minutes longer. Right. Um, but um, yeah, thank you all again for bringing out with us. This has been great. And uh, we'll see you again very, very soon. Take care. Peace. Good.